mastering and understanding these five major subsystems of the human body inside the NASM Chapter 7 is kind of a higher level way of thinking about training. And truthfully, it's actually a new addition to their seventh edition materials. They didn't used to talk about this before. I like that it's been added, but it's kind of a tough one to grasp. And what it really does is it introduces this concept of muscle synergies and the fact that although we do have muscles that work in isolation, right, when we think about bodybuilding, we think about overloading a certain muscle, but when we get into understanding compound movements, lifting, pushing, pulling, a lot of these muscles are working together to transfer force across joints and across tissues and that's what these subsystems really describe. So in this video, we're going to break down each of your five major subsystems, what muscles are involved and a little bit of context to what it actually means in the gym. Subsystem number one is the local muscular system. This is also known as the inner unit of the core. You'll see this come back up inside your actual core training chapter. And these muscles, their real primary role is more segmental stabilization of the spine, right? Think about creating that inner stability from our pelvis into our vertebra. Muscles that are involved, some muscles that you might not normally think of as far as the core, we're gonna have everything from our pelvic floor, our diaphragm, our transverse abdominis, muscles like our QL, this quadratus lumborum, and then also some smaller muscles in the back, the rotatoris and the multifidi. And these muscles, again, they're gonna constantly be working together to create stability. And there's also a little piece of this called the feed forward mechanism that is kind of confusing for a lot of students. And it's just the idea that these muscles actually anticipate movement. So let's say you're walking or you're running, these muscles will actually contract and stabilize before you hit the ground. So that that way, when you create stability through the core and through the pelvis, we're able to generate force and transfer further on into whatever movement you're doing as far as this feed forward process. Subsystem number two is the deep longitudinal system. And the one thing you'll see as you look at the muscles that are involved in the system is most of them are in the sagittal plane, these longer muscles, the erector spinae, our hamstring muscles, also the peroneus longus and the anterior tibialis, two muscles of the lower leg. And these muscles, their primary role as they work together is really to control and stabilize what we call ground reaction forces, right? The forces coming up from the ground during our gait cycle, when we're walking, when we're running not only stabilizing the actual movement, but also continuing to help propel us forward while maximizing force transfer. So this one again can seem kind of complicated and abstract, but just keep in mind, these muscles are working together to help control and propel gait during locomotive activities. Subsystem number three, the posterior oblique system. This one's kind of exciting and really involved in a lot of our athletic and also rotational movements because our lats and our glutes, these are big prime movers. And their role as far as this posterior oblique system goes, when we think about rotation, right, we're these cross-body creatures. So if you really look at the anatomy, that connection between our lats and glutes, what they help to do is they not only help to transfer forces through our pelvis, but they also help to stabilize the pelvis. So when we think about it, we do think about rotational movements where we get to use the lats and glutes together. But even when we're doing things like broad jumps or even hinging like with deadlifts, contraction of both the glutes and the lats helps to stabilize that thoracolumbar fascia in that low back. So really important locomotive muscles. These are big ones that help us transfer a lot of forces back and forth in the pelvis. Subsystem number four, the anterior oblique system is actually closely related to our previous, the posterior oblique system. So if we have the glutes and the lats in our previous that are helping to transfer forces through the pelvis, on the front side, we get the combination of our AD ductors, as well as the obliques, the internal and the external, and our internal rotators of the hip. And these very much do the same thing on the front side of the body. Not only do they help us transfer forces, as we look at this opposite side body that most of us operate in with athletic movements, whether it's rotating, whether I'm swinging a bat, but it also helps to stabilize the pelvis, even during kind of single leg or split stance positions. So anterior and posterior oblique have very, very similar purposes, just working on opposite sides of the body and the pelvis. The fifth and last major subsystem of the human body that you need to know for your NSM material and to be a great coach is the lateral subsystem. And this one oftentimes is kind of like the forgotten one as well because the lateral subsystem is all about controlling frontal plane motion. And if you look at those muscles, you'll see we have the AD ductors on one side as well as the AB ductors on that same side combining with our TFL and our quadratus lumborum. So quite a few muscles happening there but all of those muscles help to control frontal plane motion, right? Even when we think about being on a single leg, the only reason that I don't just collapse down or I lose that position is because I get what we call co-contraction, right? All those muscles kind of contracting at the same time to help stabilize 
that position. So even things like side planks, single side kettlebell carries, great exercises to target that lateral subsystem as we look to control frontal plane motion. So for now, focus on understanding the muscles that exist inside of each one of those subsystems, as well as just getting a little basic understanding of what that subsystem is supposed to do. And the translation of that is really how do those muscles work together to perform a certain action or to transfer forces in a certain direction. All of that over time is gonna help you better understand how do I start to actually apply some of this in the gym, which is where the real magic comes in. So if you guys took something away from this video, don't forget, like this video, subscribe to the channel. We'll keep putting out great content for you guys to not only go on and pass your NSM exam, but hopefully go on and become a great coach as well.